Game of Thrones is a show that rests on a foundation of shocking moments. People may stay for the wonderfully written characters, the dense world, and the escalating plot that leaves you just wondering what will happen next, but it's the shocking moments that get people invested. It's the water cooler chatter, the did you see Thrones last night conversations, the scenes that break the internet. They are the moments that transcend the show and permeate a wider culture. Thus, narrowing down these moments to a single list was harder than the Iron Islands. But after scouring through all the seasons again, we've pieced together a collection of brutality, betrayal, and some boobs for good measure. With this in mind, I'm Jules of WhatCulture.com, here with a list of 10 most shocking Game of Thrones moments. And just in case you hadn't preempted this from the title of the video, spoilers for Game of Thrones. Number 10. Brands Fall After years of deaths, rape, and torture, you might think this one isn't a big deal. Someone gets pushed out of a window. They live. So what? Well, you see, Jamie pushing Bran out of the window makes the top 10 because of its context. This happened right back in the very first episode, before Game of Thrones was the bear moth that it is today, and when most viewers, save for those who'd already read the books, didn't know what they were letting themselves in for. It's shocking enough to see Jamie and Cersei having incestuous sex, but it's taken way further when Bran catches them at it. The series' violence was obvious by this stage anyway, but pushing an innocent child out of a window to his potential death was the show's first first big shocking moment, and show just how far some people might be prepared to go. Number 9. The Purple Wedding This is, without a doubt, one of the most satisfying moments in the show's history. For years, Joffrey had tormented characters and viewers alike with his spoiled brat meat psychotic killer behavior, mostly tormenting the long-suffering Sansa Stark. He wasn't just the most hated character on Game of Thrones, but pretty much for all of TV. Fans had longed for him to get his comeuppance, but with the show often letting bad guys win, it seemed that there'd be no end to his illegitimate reign of terror. It especially didn't seem likely that it would come at his own wedding, just two episodes into the fourth season. After a slow build-up involving the nuptials themselves and a less-than-accurate recreation of the War of the Five Kings, Joffrey orders Tyrion to pour him some wine. He drinks as he does everything else, very smugly, but then things start to turn. He clutches at his throat, gasping for air, and turns a very royal shade of purple, and we all just watched on, asking ourselves, was this really happening? Yes, it was. And as Joffrey fell to the floor, Game of Thrones' biggest villain was no more. Number 8. Hard Home Okay, I know it sounds obvious now, but Hard Home really confirmed that this is what the end of Thrones is going to focus on, giving us the best and most shocking look yet at the true big bads of the series. The entire Hard Home battle is a jaw-dropping sequence, taking up half of the eponymous episode. The army of whites is a real horror, the stakes are incredibly high, and when the White Walkers arrive, all hell breaks loose. To pinpoint one singular moment, it's right at the end. The Night King, having driven back the Watch and the Wildlings, stares down Jon Snow. He raises his arms, and with that, raises the dead. And we were left thinking, holy shit. Number 7. Sansa's Wedding Night Game of Thrones has long had an issue with its depiction of rape, in particular the way it's used as a plot device. Daenerys was raped by Drogo back in Season 1, then Jaime raped Cersei in Season 4, which was a kind of f***ed up but consensual scene from the books, but the worst and most shocking example of this came in Season 5 in the episode Unbowed, Unbent, Unbroken. By this stage, we'd seen Sansa go through almost constant suffering over four and a half seasons, from Joffrey and Cersei to Baelish to being forced to wed Ramsay. But the very worst came on the wedding night. We already knew that Ramsay was sick, but here he robbed Sansa of something she'll never get back, doing unspeakable damage to her and even forcing Reek to watch on helpless for good measure. Number 6. Hold the Door Season 6 had a lot of epic moments. The one truly huge shock, though, for book readers and unsullied viewers alike was Hodor's death. While fans have theorized for years about the gentle giant, hardly anyone saw this coming. Pursued by whites, Mira shouts to Hodor, hold the door, as she escapes with Bran. At the same time, Bran is in the past, having a vision of young Hodor, aka Willis. Time loops back on itself, and we see that what caused Willis to become Hodor was Bran and Mira in the future. Hold the door, hold door, Hodor. It was an extremely touching moment, but I kind of really hope that somebody in the past then said, What are you talking about, Willis? <laughs> but still sad. Number 5. Burned at the Stake like Hodor, Shireen was one of the few truly innocent and good characters on the show. And like Hodor, she suffered a death that was harrowing and painful to watch, and a complete surprise for book readers as well as show viewers. 
Shireen is sacrificed so Stannis can march on Winterfell and defeat the Boltons. And it's made painful by how sweet we've watched this little girl to be, especially in the episodes leading up to this moment. Which in retrospect should have really been a clue. Stannis had promised he'd never hurt her, but when she says that she'll do anything to help him, she's unwittingly signing her own death warrant. As she's led through the crowd, as she's tied to the stake, even as the flames are lit, you're expecting Stannis to change his mind, or Celsi to intervene, but they just watch on as their only child is burned alive. All in the name of power. Number 4. The Mountain and the Viper Few characters who arrived late in the day have had the impact of Prince Oberyn Martell. The Red Viper made an instant impression when he arrived at the outset of Season 4, and the charm of Pedro Pascal ensured that he was already a clear fan favourite by the time he was promising to be Tyrion's champion. While he had a literal mountain to climb in order to win, it genuinely seemed like they were going to give him this one. His light-footed, twirling fighting style gave him the upper hand over the sheer size and strength of Gregor Clegane, and he'd all but struck the decisive blow. But taking too long to showboat, Clegane reached up, dragged him down, and started squeezing. And squeezing. And then, pop. By now, we were used to heroes dying, but victory here was snatched from the jaws of defeat. And for it to happen in that fashion blew our minds. Pun intended. Number 3. For the Watch. In a post-Ned Stark world, Game of Thrones has three main protagonists, Jon Snow, Tyrion Lannister, and Daenerys Targaryen. These three, above all characters, we assume will be safe. Or so it seems. Jon following in the footsteps of his father by choosing to do what was right and honourable despite the potential consequences, rescued the wildlings, despite protests from his Night's Watch brothers. The tensions escalated throughout Season 5, in particular was the daring mission to Hardhome which risked the lives of numerous brothers. It all built to the Season 5 finale, where Jon lured out under the pretense of news about his uncle Benjen is branded a traitor, and then faced with a mutinous band of brothers. As blade after blade plunges into his chest, there's still a part of you thinking thinking, this can't really be happening, he'll somehow survive, it's Jon Snow after all. Then Ollie delivers the final blow, and we're left gobsmacked as our hero lays dying in a pool of his own blood. I mean, of course he came back a year later, but there's no denying the shock of this moment. Oh, and also, f*** Ollie! Number 2. Ned Dies when Game of Thrones first started, Sean Bean was the biggest name of the cast. While the series had a huge roster, Ned was the closest thing the show had to a main protagonist. He was the hero we needed back then too. In this vast world full of characters morally ambiguous at best and bankrupt at worst, he was our compass. TV shows don't tend to kill off their main character, so when we saw Ned going deeper into the murky secrets of the Lannisters and then being thrown into a cell, we assumed he'd be fine. Hell, even when we saw his head on the chopping block and Sir Illan Payne raised his sword, it still seemed a safe bet that there'd be a last second swerve. Uh, nope. And number one, The Red Wedding. The ninth episode of Game of Thrones Season 3 is officially titled as The Reigns of Castamere, so it says it all when it's more commonly referred to as The Red Wedding episode. Rob, having broken his betrothal to one of Walder Frey's daughters, turns up at his home for the marriage of his uncle Edmure, and there's a weird assurance that everything is now fine, to forgive and forget and to all join in celebration of the new wedding. It's a masterful execution of escalation. Things are apparently going fine, but then the subtle shifts begin. Edmure and his new wife Lee the doors close behind them. There's a subtle shift in music, and Roose Bolton reveals he's wearing armor. What comes next remains the most shocking, devastating, and chaotic scene from Game of Thrones, or indeed any recent TV show. Then there's a brief pause, just enough time to try and take stock of what's happened, to try and digest the carnage that's been left behind, to catch your breath. And then we begin again. Catelyn slits a Frey's throat and has hers cut in return, and then the Lannisters send their regards. Two main characters, a few periphery ones, countless nameless folk, all oft in the space of a few chaotic minutes. Ned Stark's death said no one was safe, and the Red Wedding proved it. And that's our list. Got any more shocking moments from Game of Thrones that you'd like to share? Then tell us about them in the comments section below. And if you want to challenge me to trial by verbal combat, you can do so here, or on my personal Twitter, RetroJ with a zero. As always, I've been Jules with WhatCulture.com, and I'll speak to you soon.